Welcome back to RetroCAD. You know, I did a live stream last night and I was a little disappointed with how the audio and the overall quality came out. Uh, we were watching this generic CAD VHS tape that I got off of eBay. So this is a cassette tape from 1993 and it's basically some training for the software. Uh, there were a few things that came up in our discussion last night in the chat. Uh, one is that the plotter you see in the background is an HP Draft Pro. Super cool. I need to get one of those things sometime. Uh, what was our other question? It was, uh, oh, the use of the kind of first person noun of CAD and the CAD. The CAD is waiting for you to reply. So you're going to hear a lot of things like that in this video. So with that, Enjoy watching this cassette. See you next time. Thanks. Annette, you have a minute? Oh, sure, Robert. Come on in. Have a seat. So, what's on your mind? I'm ready to start doing all of my design and drafting work in CAD. So I just got a copy of Generic CAD 6.1. Oh, you made a great choice. You know, all of our designers and drafters have been using Generic CAD for years. It's easy to learn and flexible enough to tackle any two-dimensional drawing task. That's good to hear. Just the thought of putting an entire drawing into a computer seems like an impossible job. I'm a little overwhelmed just getting started. You're right. You know, sometimes getting started is the hardest part. But you just have to remember that even the most complex drawing starts with a single line. So you just need to draw those first few lines and you're on your way. Even if you have to redraw the lines, at least you've gotten yourself started. Shall we give it a try? Okay. Sure. In order to draw lines, you simply take the mouse and click the left button. Even though we finished the first line, the cursor is still attached to the end of it. You can keep drawing connected lines this way until you either press the escape key or select a new command. So, how do you draw a rectangle? Well, like most objects you draw in CAD, there is more than one way to draw a rectangle. You can create it from four lines or use the special rectangle command. First, let's create a 12 inch by 12 inch rectangle by drawing four lines. We'll move the cursor near the lower left corner of the screen and click the first or left mouse button. Then I'll move the cursor to the right. Now, if it doesn't move exactly horizontally, hold down the control key or type OR. This turns on ortho mode, which restricts the cursor to move only horizontally and vertically. And we'll talk about that further in a, a later discussion. By moving the cursor, we establish the direction for the line. Now we just need to enter the length. Type 12. Press Enter. For the second line, we'll move the cursor up. Hold down Control if necessary to make the line exactly vertical. Type 12 and press Enter. Then move the cursor to the left. Type 12 and press Enter. Move the cursor down. Type 12 and press Enter. Press Escape to finish drawing lines. Now let's draw the same 12 inch by 12 inch rectangle, but use coordinates to place the endpoints of the four lines. We'll type MR for manual entry relative mode. Move the cursor so it is to the right of the first rectangle and click. Type 12 comma zero. Press enter. Now this is the XY coordinate of the line's second endpoint as measured from the first endpoint. In other words, you start at the first endpoint and move 12 inches in the positive X direction and zero inches in the Y direction to get to the other endpoint. Uh, don't worry if this isn't clear at this time. We'll explain more about using coordinates in a later session. I'll type 0, 12, then press Enter. Then we'll type minus or negative 12, 0, and press Enter. Type 0, negative 12, and press Enter. Press Escape. 
Next, we'll draw the same box again, but use the rectangle command and enter coordinates. We'll type RE for the rectangle command. Now look at the instructions on the bottom of the screen. CAD prompts you to enter one corner of the rectangle. So position the cursor where you want the first corner and click. Then move the cursor and notice a rectangle rubber banding from that first point. This shows you what the rectangle is going to look like when you place the second corner. The prompt line instructs you to enter opposite corner. We'll type 12, 12 and press enter. You can see that the size and the shape of the rectangles are the same. We just use three different ways to draw it. I know we entered 12 inches for the width of those boxes, but they're obviously much smaller on the screen. How do you know what size they really are? In CAD's memory, everything is stored as the exact size you drew it, 12 inches by 12 inches in this case. They don't show up that way on the screen, only because of the particular way I've chosen to display the drawing. When entering information, you want to use the actual dimensions, just as if you were drawing the object on a piece of paper on a one-to-one -one scale. But unlike manual drawing, you are not limited by the size of the paper. You can think of generic CAD as an electronic drafting board of unlimited size, so that you can even draw a large building at full size. But if you draw everything at full size, how can a large object show up on a small computer screen? Oh, CAD has zoom commands that let you change the amount of your design that you want to see on the screen at any one time. Since we drew all these boxes to be 12 inches across, there's no way we could display them all on our screen at full size, since the screen is only a little more than 12 inches across itself. So we just change the scale at which they're displayed, instead of drawing them smaller. Think of it as adjusting the zoom lens on a camera. You can zoom out on the picture to see everything, like we are now, or you can zoom in close to see a more specific and detailed portion. You can also set the exact scale at which to view the drawing, similar to drawing objects on paper at a particular scale. You can also think of it as moving away from the drawing to get a wider view, or moving toward the drawing to see a smaller area. You can even nest zoom commands within another command. For example, you can start drawing a line and zoom out to place the other endpoint without having to restart the command. Here's another example that might help you better understand using zooms and real-world measurements in CAD. First, I'll pull in a drawing of a house elevation view. Now I'm going to zoom window and move in on this six-foot-tall figure. Notice the scale on the status line. Now I'll zoom in again, this time all the way to the wristwatch. Now compare your watch to the one on the screen. Now I understand. You create your designs entering actual dimension so that CAD has an accurate representation of everything in it. That's right. As long as you draw everything at full size, your designs will always be completely accurate. You can even use your CAD drawings to show potential uh, interferences and clearances. But what if you use real-world dimensions uh, for a building or some other large object, and then you want to print it on paper? Oh, that's a good question. The only way CAD can print an object that is larger than a piece of paper is to print it at a particular scale. You can think of this as just like creating a drawing manually. The first thing the drafter has to do is decide what scale to use to fit the drawing on the piece of paper. So when a large drawing is printed in CAD, it's printed at a particular scale. Now, you can specify that scale, or you can let CAD decide which scale is necessary to fit the entire drawing on the paper. It seems like such a powerful program. But I have all different kinds of clients. I need to create oh, architectural drawings, mechanical drawings, uh, electronic schematic drawings. Can I use generic CAD for everything, or is it best used for houses and other architectural drawings? Generic CAD is ideal for creating any types of drawings. Uh, many of the commands used for drawing, editing, creating symbols, using layers that will be used in all types of drawings. But there are special features that can make it easier and faster to satisfy your specific needs. For example, CAD provides a powerful double line feature that is ideal for drawing walls, like those shown here. Different line types and a multi-line feature can be used to create special wall types of wiring or plumbing. You can easily create drawings like this with a special snap command for creating tangent, perpendicular, and parallel lines. A radial copy feature is used for making gear teeth and other circular repeating patterns. Dimensions can be set up to match any drawing standards, mechanical, architectural, or otherwise.
Generic CAD grid feature is ideal for placing symbols at specific intervals, like those in this schematic. And CAD stores your designs with extreme accuracy, six places to the right of the decimal point, so you always have exact placement of lines, text, and symbols. Oh, let's take a break for now. When we come back, I'll explain the program screen and show you how to use the menu to select commands. And then we can take a look at how CAD can show you how to draw faster, more efficiently. Great. <laughs> Last time we talked about general CAD concepts. Let's be a little more specific. Let's take a look at the program screen. All right. I noticed that you were drawing in the center area of the screen here. What's all this other information? The program screen has five major features. This blank portion of the screen is the drawing area. You can think of it as your electronic paper. The crosshair you see in this area is called the cursor. You move it around the screen by moving your mouse or other pointing device like a trackball or a digitizer puck. If desired, you can change the size and color of the cursor at any time. The position of the cursor is shown at the top of the screen in the form of X and Y coordinates or Cartesian coordinates. A menu of all the commands is shown in this area on the right side of the screen. You probably noticed me selecting commands from the menu in our last session. And finally, the command and prompt area is located at the bottom of the screen. This is where you see the commands and information you type in and the prompts that Generic CAD gives you. Whenever you're confused about what to do next, be sure to read the command line because CAD uses this line to give you instructions. So how do I use all these commands you keep mentioning? As a beginner, there are two things you're going to want to do before you start drawing. The first is to turn off the tandem cursor. What's that? But when you first start Generic CAD, as you move the cursor around the drawing area, you'll see highlighting of the menu items at the same time. The first button of your mouse is used for clicking in the drawing area, and the last button of your mouse is used for making menu selections. With the cursor in tandem mode, you don't have to physically move the cursor over to the menu to choose commands. This saves time for experienced users, but when first learning CAD, it's easy to confuse drawing area mouse clicks with menu area mouse clicks. So to turn the tandem cursor off, we'll go to the root menu. First, we'll select Display, then select Screen Display. Then I'll click on the tandem cursor. Now the cursor operates at one time in either the drawing area or the menu area. The other thing that will be helpful as you learn CAD is to use the Help 6 sidebar menu. I'll type LV to load a different menu. Then I'll click on Help 6. Now when we go to the different commands, its two-letter code is listed next to it. I've noticed that you've been typing a lot of them. Oh, that's right. There are two basic ways to execute a generic CAD command. You can either select it from the sidebar menu or type in its two-letter code. Now, it's often easiest when you are learning the program to select commands from the menu, since they're all listed there or arranged in categories. But actually, it's much faster to enter a two-letter code than to click through several menus, so you'll want to learn the codes of the commands you use most commonly. Most of the command codes are easy to learn, too, like RE for rectangle, CO for copy, and ER for erase. The menu even helps you learn the command codes, since it lists the two-letter code beside each command. Why don't you explain the menu first? I see the root menu on the screen. What's that? Well, the root menu is like the table of contents of the entire menu system. It lists all the submenus or categories of commands that are available. To move to one of those submenus, you use your mouse or pointing device to move the highlight bar to the item you want to select and click the left mouse button. For example, the commands for drawing objects are found on the Draw menu. To move to that menu, move the highlight bar to the word Draw and click. The Draw menu is then displayed. As you can see, it lists a variety of commands for drawing basic entities like lines, rectangles, polygons, circles, arcs, curves, and so on. To return to the root menu, we'll select it from the bottom of the draw menu. It's easy enough to use the menu, but it's hard for me to visualize how the whole thing is organized. Oh, I can give you a couple of tips to help you better understand the menu. Here's the uh, command card that came with Generic CAD. It's a good idea to keep this by your computer at all times because it lists all the menus and shows you how you can move between them. Another tip is to use the page down and page up keys to move consecutively through all the pages. 
when you get to the final page, the root menu is displayed again. So you can think of the menu as being circular. Scrolling through the menus may help you familiarize yourself better with the features and their menu locations. So you can select commands from the menu or use the two-letter code. Are there other ways to give CAD commands? Oh, you can execute some commands with the function keys. When you install generic CAD, it sets up your function keys with some commonly used commands. The function key settings are shown on the command card. You can use them or change them at any time with the macro assign command if they don't meet your needs. For example, you can press F5 to start the zoom window command. Press F12 for oops when you make a mistake and you want to reverse the last thing you did. Another shortcut is to use the spacebar to repeat the last command that was used. To erase these lines, you would type OE to start object erase and pick the first line. Then just press the spacebar as many times as you need to repeat the object erase command and pick the next line. As long as we're talking about special keys, the escape key is used to abort a command. Anytime you get to the middle of something and it's not what you wanted, or you're not sure of what to do, press escape. For some commands, you may actually have to press escape more than once to abort all the steps and return to the command prompt. The mouse button can be used to execute a command too. If you have a two button mouse, you can select the snap nearest point or NP command by holding down the shift key and clicking the left button. You'll find that NP is probably your most frequently used command. If you have a three button mouse, the third button is programmed by default for snap nearest point. If you prefer, you can change the third button to execute some other command. Why is the snap nearest point command used so often? Can't you just pick points by clicking on them? I explained how you click the mouse to pick points on the screen like we did with drawing lines. However, CAD is so precise, it's essentially impossible to position your cursor and click on any particular point exactly. For example, we can get as close as possible to the end point of this line and start another line. It doesn't look too bad on the screen now, but if we zoom in around that point, we see that it is off by quite a bit. Here's where snap nearest point is used. Instead of just clicking near the desired end point, position the cursor near it and click the third button or shift and click the first button. You then see the cursor snap or attach exactly to the end point. No matter how close you zoom up on that point, the line that we snapped into place is always attached exactly. So you can pick arbitrary points on the screen by using the first mouse button. Mm -hmm. But to select or attach to an existing point, like uh, the end point of a line or an arc, you'd have to snap to it. You bet. How, how can I ever remember all this? Is there online help that I can look at? Oh, yes. CAD has a comprehensive online help system. To access it, select Help from the root menu or hold down the Alt key and press H. This brings up the Help Index, which is arranged alphabetically. From here, you select the alphabetical range for the topic you're interested in. For example, to get help on a snap command, click on alphabetical category S1. Then the list of topics is displayed, and you can select the one you want to learn about. The help system is context sensitive, too. To get help directly on a specific command, select the command from the menu or by typing its two-letter command. Then press Alt H to bring up the help information on that command. All these features and commands are mm -hmm. great, but there are so many of them. How will I learn them all? Oh, you really only need to know about 20 out of the 300 or so commands that are available in order to start being productive. You remember I mentioned earlier that there are commands that you use on a more frequent basis. I, I sort of refer to those as my bread and butter commands. I use them the most uh, for just about every drawing session. It's a really good idea to learn the two-letter codes for them since it can save you time moving between menus. You may want to start out by selecting all commands from the menu until you become familiar with the command name. Then you should start trying to guess the command's two-letter code before looking it up on the menu. If you're wrong, you can always select it from the menu or look it up on the command card. I found it really helps to try to figure out the code first, then you're more likely to remember it the next time. Generic CAD offers many other commands that are used less than the basic draw and editing commands, but they're just as important. My list shows some commands for constraints, display, and file commands. With all these commands to learn, it seems like it's going to take just as long to create a drawing in CAD as it does to draw it manually. 
I understand that my drawings will be more accurate, but is CAD going to really save me any time? Well, do any of your clients ever change their mind? Or do you ever have to modify a drawing? Of course. Almost every job there are changes. Well, that's where CAD can really save you time. Take a look at this. One of CAD's biggest advantages over manual drafting is modifying existing drawings. Drawings on paper can be a real hassle to edit, assuming you don't have to redraw it entirely. In generic CAD, you just load a drawing that needs editing, make the necessary changes, and print out a brand new copy. You never have to redraw, and there are never any messy erasures or whiteouts or new sections taped over the original drawing. You're right. Being able to change a drawing in the computer could really save us a lot of time. But the more we talk about CAD, the more concerned I get about making a mistake on the computer and losing my work. I can't afford to lose a drawing. It means losing business. At least when I draw on paper, I know what I've done, and I know where to find it the next day. What happens when I start and switch to CAD? Oh, it's wise to be concerned about saving your work. It's a good idea to develop good habits about saving your work right from the start. Save your work to disk at least every 15 minutes. That way, if something goes wrong, you never lose more than 15 minutes of work. Of course, you always want to save your drawings before quitting CAD or erasing the drawings. You should also back up all your drawings to another disk or tape drive, just in case you ever have a problem with your hard drive. I always back up all my drawings on floppy disk at the end of every day. So, how would I save my drawings to disk? Well, now that we've modified this drawing, let's save it. First, we'll type SA for save, or select the file menu. Select Save. Select D to save your entire drawing. When prompted, we'll enter the file name you want to use for the drawing. Now that you know how to save drawings to disk, you also need to know how to load them back into CAD. To load a drawing, we'll type LO for load, or go to the file menu. Select Load. Select D to load a drawing. When prompted, enter the file name you want to use for the drawing or click the name on the sidebar listing of drawings. Then you will see a ghost image of the outline of the drawing attached to the cursor. You can either click where you want the drawing to go or press enter to place the drawing at the screen origin. Now you know how to use the menu, select commands, and save and load your drawings. Next time, let's take a look at drawing objects to their exact size and then putting them together to create a complete drawing. Sounds good. Okay. Now I think we're ready to learn how to use some more commands. You notice when we first start the program, the screen is blank. So, what do you want to do? Well, uh, draw something like a circle. Okay. To draw objects, we need to bring up the draw menu. So, move the highlight bar to the word draw and click the left mouse button. The menu shows many of the commands for drawing basic objects like line, rectangle, circle, and so on. We already saw how to draw lines and rectangles in our first session. So let's draw a two-point circle. The two just means we will be prompted to place two points to define this circle. Click Circle 2 on the menu or type C2. On the command line at the bottom of the screen, CAD prompts with Enter Center of the Circle. So we'll move the cursor to where you want the center of the circle and click the first mouse button. I see a circle growing and stretching from the center of the circle and the cursor. Why is it there? Well, one of the real benefits of generic CAD is that it shows you what the object is going to look like before you actually place the last point. It's called rubber banding because the line or object stretches between the anchor point and the current position of the cursor. As you move the cursor away from the first endpoint, the line gets longer, and as you move the cursor closer, it gets shorter. To continue our circle, we'll check the command line at the bottom of the screen for instructions. CAD prompts you to enter a point on the circle. So we'll move the cursor to where you want the next point and click again to place it. This point is on the perimeter of the circle, so it defines the circle's radius. I see how the command line is so important. It tells you what to do for every step of the command. Yes. You really want to check the prompt before every point you place, at least when you're first learning to use a command. We'll use a very similar process to draw arcs. Notice that the menu has commands for a two-point arc and a three-point arc. To draw a two-point arc, 
you define it by placing a center point and then two points on the arc. We'll click Arc 2 on the menu or type A2. CAD prompts with Enter Center of Arc. So we'll position the cursor at the point where you want the center of the arc to be. We'll move to the arc's first endpoint and click. Then move to the arc's second endpoint and click. That seems like an easy enough way to draw an arc. Mm -hmm. Why is there another arc command? Well, sometimes the dimensions you have may make it easier to define your arc with three points, the two endpoints and a point on the arc. Here's how it works. Click Arc 3 on the menu or type A3. CAD prompts with Enter Start of Arc. Then we'll move the cursor to the arc's first endpoint and click. Then we'll move the cursor to the point on the arc and click. Finally, we'll move the cursor to the arc's second endpoint and click. Sometimes I draw floor plans. Is there a special command for walls? Oh, to draw walls as two parallel lines, it's best to use the double line command. First, we'll select double settings to establish the distance between the two lines and the position of each line relative to the cursor. A menu of the different settings that you can change appears in the prompt area at the bottom of the screen. We'll select Right Offset, either by clicking on it or by typing the highlighted letter, R for right in this case. We'll type 3 and press Enter. This will be the distance between the cursor and the line on the right side of the cursor as you are drawing a vertical line. Click on the left offset to define the distance between the cursor and the left line. Type 3 and press Enter. We'll press Enter to save the settings and return to the command prompt. By making the left and right offsets equal, does it place the cursor in the center of the walls as you are drawing? That's right. Our walls are said to have a total width of 6 inches, with the cursor in the exact center between the parallel lines of the wall. So, now let's draw some walls. First, we'll select Double Line from the Draw menu. We'll draw some arbitrary double lines with OR off. You can draw double lines just like we drew normal single lines earlier. Notice the lines are rubber banding from the first point, with the cursor in the middle of the wall. As you click to place endpoints, CAD automatically creates the corners for you. You can even set up a fillet radius and have the corners rounded off as you draw. We'll press Escape to finish drawing the double lines. Most of my floor plans have lines that are exactly horizontal or vertical. Is there an easy way to draw lines at a particular angle? Yes, there's a feature called Ortho Mode you can use to constrain the cursor to move only at particular angles 90 degrees apart. For example, we'll select Root Menu, then select Constraints Menu, then we'll select Ortho Mode or type OR. Ortho Mode is a toggle command, meaning it's either on or it's off. When you select the command, we'll check the command line at the bottom of the screen for the status of the toggle. In this case, notice that it says Ortho Mode is on. If it said Ortho was off, you would want to select it again and turn it on. So, if a toggle command is on and you select it, it's turned off. If the command is off, then selecting it turns it back on. Exactly. Now, when we start to draw, the cursor can only move horizontally and vertically. The ortho mode command constrains it to those angles. Can you use ortho mode to draw at other angles, like 45 degrees from horizontal? Yes, by setting what's called the ortho angle. I'll select Ortho Angle by typing OA, then type 45 and press Enter. Let's draw some lines. You can see that the cursor can now only move at angles that are 45 degrees from horizontal or vertical. Ortho Mode and Ortho Angle are very commonly used commands, so you should learn their two-letter command codes. It's OR to turn Ortho Mode on and off, and it's OA to set the Ortho Angle. Another trick to help you draw faster is to use the control key to toggle between ortho on and off. Holding down control temporarily changes the state of the ortho mode toggle. When you let it up, ortho mode returns to whatever it was set to. Let's draw lines using ortho on. We'll hold down control and draw more lines. When we let control up, ortho mode is back on. I'll press escape to quit drawing the lines. That seems easy enough but it looks like you're drawing lines that are just an arbitrary length. I have to be much more accurate than that. Is, is there a way that I can draw more precisely? Oh, precision drawing is really CAD's strong point, 
and there are several ways to draw a, an object of a, a specific size or angle. Uh, for instance, the direct distance method that we talked about in the very first session, that's the easiest. To do so, you just move the cursor in the desired direction and enter the length. For example, to draw a horizontal line 12 feet long, we'll click or snap to place the first end point. Then we'll use ortho mode to help draw lines that are perfectly horizontal. Before you can move horizontally, you have to set the ortho angle back to zero, right? That's right. We'll type OA, type zero, and press enter. Now we'll move the cursor in the direction you want the line to go. We'll type 12 feet and press enter. Be sure to type the foot mark or your number will be interpreted as inches. You can also use this method to enter the radius of a circle or other distances. Fine, but what if I don't know the exact angle at which to place a line? Do I have to figure that out each time? Well, you could, but it's probably easier to enter the point in terms of its coordinates. When using CAD, it's very helpful to have a good understanding of coordinate systems. Are you familiar with Cartesian and polar coordinates? A little. I could use some review. I haven't worked with them since high school. Okay, here's a drawing that shows portions of the Cartesian system. The X and Y axes intersect at the origin point. Every point on the drawing has a unique set of X and Y coordinates that can be used to locate it relative to the origin. A positive X coordinate means the point is to the right of the origin. A negative X coordinate means it is to the left. Similarly, a positive Y coordinate locates the point above the origin and a negative y coordinate means it's below. You use these same coordinates to locate points on your CAD drawing screen. You can actually locate points with polar coordinates too if it's more convenient to enter a distance from the origin and an angle from the positive x axis. So if I know a point's coordinates, I can enter them directly from the keyboard instead of clicking a point on the screen. Exactly. Now, there are several ways of entering coordinates, but we only have time to discuss a few of them here. Using coordinates in generic CAD is called manual entry of points. The manual entry command is found on the constraints menu. We'll start by selecting the constraints menu. Then we'll type PR, then ZB to show origin. What is that point on the screen? Well, the point shown with a small asterisk is the origin. You could imagine the X and Y axes intersecting at that point. We can choose to enter coordinates so they are all referenced from this origin. First, let's select ME origin for manual entry origin mode. To enter the coordinates of a point, just type the X coordinate, a comma, the Y coordinate, and then press enter. I'll type 0, comma, 0, and press enter. The cursor snaps to that point, the origin in this case. Notice that the coordinate readout also goes to 0, comma, 0 when we select the point. We'll draw a line exactly 20 feet long, horizontally, to the right. This means the second point has an x-coordinate of positive 20 feet and a y-coordinate of 0. We'll type 20 feet, comma, 0 and press enter. To place the next endpoint at the point x equals 10 feet, y equals 20 feet, I'll type 10 feet, comma, 20 feet and press enter. The second line is drawn with its endpoint at 10 feet to the right of the origin and 20 feet above the origin. My drawings don't usually give dimensions that are referenced from one point, like the origin point you're using. Uh -huh. Do I have to calculate the coordinates of every point? Oh no, CAD is very flexible. It's often more convenient to reference your coordinates from the last point drawn or used rather than a single origin point. In that case, CAD uses the ME relative mode. Let's take a look. We'll select ME relative by typing MR, then type 0, 0 and press Enter. The cursor snaps to the last point entered, the end of the last line in this case, instead of the origin point. To draw a line exactly 20 feet long, horizontally to the right, we enter the same coordinates we did before. We'll type 20 feet, 0 and press Enter. But now, if we enter 10 feet, 20 feet like we did before, you'll see the difference that ME relative makes. We'll type 10 feet, 20 feet and press enter. Starting from the previous point, the new end point is 10 feet in the positive X direction and 20 feet in the positive Y direction. I see. 
So to draw a rectangle in the relative mode, you would place the first corner, then give the x and y distances from the first point to the opposite corner. Let's do it. First, I'll type RE for a draw rectangle. Then click to place the first corner of the rectangle. Now we'll enter the x and y distances. You'll type 10 feet, comma, 20 feet. The rectangle is drawn so its horizontal side is 10 feet long and its vertical side is 20 feet long. Well, we managed to cover a lot of important concepts this time, including your basic drawing commands, the uh, ortho mode, and the manual entry. You know, this would be a good time for you to start working on your tutorials in the generic CAD 6.1 user study. How about that uh, basketball court in Chapter 13? We can get started on it here, and then you can finish it up on your own. Okay. Now, the first thing to do is to establish the proper settings to make it easier to draw the court. As you use generic CAD more, establishing these settings will become second nature. For now, if there are some settings that you don't understand, you may want to refer to the user's manual for more information about them. First, we'll set the units. We'll select the root menu, select the display menu, We'll select units by typing UN. Then we'll click feet or type T, click coordinates by typing DC, click relative or type R to toggle on. Then we'll press enter. Next, let's change the generic CAD environment by selecting the root menu, then select the constraints menu. Select ME relative by typing MR. Select cursor free or type CF to toggle it on. Select ortho mode or type OR to toggle it on. Whenever you select a toggle command like cursor free or ortho mode, be sure to read the command line. It will tell you whether you just set the toggle to on or off. If it is not set as you wanted it, just select it again to change it. Now let's start drawing the court. First, we'll select the root menu. Select rectangle, type RE. Then we'll click near the bottom left corner of the screen for the first corner. For the second corner, type 94 feet, comma, 50 feet, then press enter. We have to remember to enter the foot mark, or CAD will interpret your dimensions as being in inches. Next, let's find the center of the court in order to draw the center circle. To see the whole basketball court, we select the root menu, select the zooms menu, select all, or type ZA. Now we'll draw a vertical line across the center of the court. To find the midpoint of a line, we'll use the snap midpoint command. By selecting the root menu, then select the snaps menu, then we'll select midpoint or type SM. When CAD prompts for the midpoint of which line, click the top line. Click midpoint again or SM to locate the other end of the line. Then click the bottom line. Then press escape. Next, you want to draw a circle so its center point is in the midpoint of the line you just drew across the court. So select the root menu. Then we'll select the draw menu. Then we'll select circle two or type C2. For the center of the circle, we'll type SM for a snap midpoint. Then click the middle line. For the radius of the circle, type six feet. Press enter. We'll repeat this process to draw a circle with a two-foot radius inside the first circle. We'll start by typing C2, then type SM for snap midpoint, click the middle line, type two feet, press enter. You see how easy it is to work through the tutorials in the user's guide? <laughs> you just follow the steps exactly as they're laid out. Why not finish that uh, basketball court when you go back to your computer and, and try some of those other exercises? I'll do it. Last time we talked about drawing individual objects. Now let's talk about putting those objects together with snap commands. And then I'll show you a few other commands you can use to uh, edit or make modifications in any drawings that you need to make any changes in. Well, we already talked about using the snap near point command to uh -huh. attach lines exactly. Are there other snap commands? Actually, there are several. First, let's review snap near point since it's the snap most often used. Snap near point is not just for lines. You can actually use it to snap to other points, like the end point of an arc or curve, the center of a circle, or any corner point of a rectangle or polygon. To snap to an existing point, 
you first move the cursor near the desired point. Then use one of these three ways to execute the snap. You can click the third or right mouse button, or hold down the shift key and click the first or left mouse button, or type MT. It seems like you use the snap near point for everything. Why do you need other snap commands? Well, there are many times when another type of snap is better. Suppose we want a line to end exactly on another line, but we don't want to attach to its endpoint. Let's take a look at this example. I'll draw a line. Then I'll start another line so its second endpoint can be snapped to the first one. Here we use the snap object command. This causes the cursor to snap to the closest point that is exactly on the nearby object. We'll type SO or select snap object from the menu. Then move the cursor close to where you want to attach to the line and click the first mouse button. I see. So the other snaps are used to attach to other points besides just endpoints. That's right. Another example is the snap midpoint command. It's used when you want to snap exactly to the midpoint of a line or arc. Could you also use snap midpoint to snap to the midpoint of one side of a rectangle? Whenever you're not sure how something works in CAD, it's best to just give it a try. Let's see what happens. First, we'll draw a rectangle. Then we'll start a new line. I'll type SM to snap to one side of the rectangle. Well, you can see that you were right. Snap midpoint also applies to rectangles. Actually, the sides of rectangles and polygons are just made up of normal lines, so any command that works on a line works on them, too. If you want your drawings to be accurate, it's important that you use snap or enter exact coordinates, like we talked about last time, for practically every point you place. The snaps menu shows some of the other commands available, like snap tangent, snap parallel, snap perpendicular, and snap percentage. You'll want to experiment with all of them and apply them to your own drawings. It looks like it'll just take some practice for me to become proficient with all the commands for creating drawings. Uh, maybe right now we should look at uh, some of the commands for changing an object once you get started. Let's take a look at the edit menu. You can see it has commands to copy, erase, move, stretch, scale, and so on. You can perform these editing operations on just a single object or at any group of objects, including everything in your drawing. For many of the editing commands, there is also a similar shortcut command that does the same function, but offers less flexibility in how you can select the objects to edit. Since the shortcut commands are a little easier to understand, let's try some of them first. I'll load a mechanical drawing. Then I'll select the shortcuts menu. First, why not erase some objects? Now, what command do you think we should use? Well, I'd try the object erase command. That's right. Just select the command or type OE and click on the object to erase. It's wiped out of the drawing. Uh, to erase a group of objects, you could repeat object erase for every object by pressing the space bar, or you could use window erase. All the window editing commands let you select a group of objects to edit with one command. These commands get their name because you show CAD which objects to edit by enclosing them in a window or box. For example, we'll select Window Erase by typing WE. See that the prompt says Place Window. Now we'll draw a window around the object to erase by placing the two corner points, just like we did to draw a rectangle. We'll click below and to the left of a portion of the gear. Then move the mouse upward and to the right until the box encloses the desired object. Then we'll click to finish the window. All the objects that were completely enclosed in the window are erased, while any lines or objects that were crossing the box are still there. Can you select your whole drawing by enclosing all of it in the window? Oh yes, the window commands can be used to select from just one object to everything in your drawing. This is what makes them different from the object editing commands, since they can only act on one object at a time. Are the objects you erased gone forever? Or can I get them back if I made a mistake and really didn't want to erase them? As long as you don't quit out of the drawing or out of CAD, you can use the OOPS command to reverse the last commands that were executed. So to bring the erase objects back, select OOPS by typing OO. To go back one more step, type OO again. 
We can also use the space bar to repeat the oops command. Now, if you use oops too many times, you can always select unoop to restore the results of the previous command. We'll type uu and unoop the last command. See? Uh-huh. I'm sure oops will be on my list of most used commands. Erase seems easy enough. Now, how do you move objects? Well, let's pick window move to move the gear. We'll place a window around the gear like we did before for the erase command. Now see that CAD prompts you to enter a reference point. In this case, you can click anywhere on the screen for the reference point. Move the cursor to the left towards the new location of the reference point. Notice the image of the object moves along with the cursor, so you can see what it's going to look like before you actually complete the command. That way you can escape out of the command if it's not what you had in mind. When you're satisfied with the new position, we'll click or snap to finish the move. You can see that the objects are all moved relative to the reference point we picked. You pick the first reference point, you show where to move that reference point to, and all the selected objects move along with it. How do you know where to pick the first point? Well, in this case it didn't matter since we weren't trying to move an object to an exact point, but there will be times when you'll need to be more precise. Let's copy the gear to a particular point so you can see an example of using a specific reference point. We'll select Window Copy by typing WC and place a window around the gear just like we did before. For the reference point, snap near point to the center of the circle. Now CAD prompts for the new location of the reference point. Let's place the copy of the gear so it is exactly centered on the circle in this lower view. To do that, we need to snap to that point. So I'll snap near point to the center of the circle. Since we executed a copy command, CAD asks for the number of copies you want to make. You can make from 1 to 99 copies of the original part. We'll type 2 and press Enter. Since we snapped to the center of the circle, the first gear is placed exactly on that point. How did CAD know where to place the second copy of the gear? Well, the second copy is drawn so there is the same distance and angle between the two reference points. We use the center of the circle as the reference point. So the offset between the two copies is exactly the same as between the original gear and the first copy. Another very handy shortcut command is window stretch. And suppose your client wants this part to be six inches wide instead of four inches. How would you do this with manual drafting? It would mean a lot of work. I'd have to erase all these dimensions and lines and then redraw it all at a larger size. Wow, that's where CAD really shines. Let's take a look at window stretch. Stretch these lines. I'll type WS for window stretch. Then we'll place a window around the area you want to stretch. Make sure the lines you want to stretch are actually crossed by the window. Then we'll click to pick the reference point anywhere on the drawing. Now the rubber banding shows what the new part is going to look like. Ortho mode is on, so we can only move horizontally. We want to stretch it exactly two inches, so use the direct distance method to enter it. Then we'll move cursor to the left. We'll type 2 and press Enter. It looks like the dimensions changed too. How did you do that? CAD has what's called associative dimensioning. Whenever you change the size of a part, any existing dimension values are automatically updated to match it. We can talk more about that when we cover dimensions. The shortcut commands seem so powerful. What's the difference between them and the commands on the edit menu? With the shortcut commands, you can only edit objects either individually or by selecting them with a window. Sometimes this just isn't good enough, especially if you have a very detailed drawing. The edit commands allow you to use a combination of methods to pick and choose exactly which objects you want to edit. So the main advantage of the edit commands over the shortcuts is the ability to add to the object selected for the command. Well, not only can you add to the selection set of objects, but you can also remove objects that you don't really want to edit. Uh, let's take a look at the copy command. We'll select copy by typing CO. Click on window and draw a window around the lower gear and other objects. Suppose we really didn't want to copy all these other objects. We only wanted the gear. Now we can easily deselect or remove the other objects from the selection set. You can use any of the selection methods to deselect objects by holding down the control key and selecting the desired method. 
we will hold down the control key. I'll click on Window. Now we'll draw a window around the extraneous object. Notice that all those objects are no longer highlighted, meaning they have been removed from the selection set and won't be copied. Now we'll press Enter when you're satisfied with the selected object. Finish the copy command just like we did for the shortcut window copy. We'll click to pick the reference point. Move the cursor and click to pick the new reference point. Then we'll enter 1 for the number of copies. I can see that selection sets give you a lot of flexibility, especially if you have a complex drawing. Do the other edit commands work the same way? Oh yes, all the edit commands use the same selection menu. But of course you can use the edit command just to remove a single object or use a window, but in those cases it's probably faster to use a shortcut command. We talked a lot about creating very simple drawings and how to modify them. Next time let's take a look at how to create more complex items like text and dimensions. Okay. After I finish creating a drawing in CAD, I may want to add uh, comments or descriptions. Mm -hmm. Would it be easier to just print out the drawing and then enter these by hand? After all, CAD isn't a word processor. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but generic CAD does offer some great text features. I mean, I wouldn't write a book on it, but when it comes to adding labels or descriptions, title block information, it's no problem at all. Let's take a look at the options on the text menu. First, we'll select the text menu. Now, the most commonly used text commands are line place, TL, edit, TE, and text settings, TS. What about those other text commands like append and change? Once you place text in your drawing, CAD offers many options for editing it. Just as you can edit existing objects without redrawing them, you can edit existing text without re-entering it. Before we start to place text, we need to enter the settings that define the height, the rotation, the font, and other characteristics of the text. First, we'll select Text Settings, TS. We'll click on the word font to select it. The font is the style of lettering that the text will be drawn with, and CAD has many to choose from. Now we'll select Text. The text font is a basic straight line font that is fast to draw on the screen. Can you enter text with different fonts into one drawing? Yes, you can. You may want to set the text style of notes to be different from that used for instructions. For example, you may also want to use a fancier font in your title block than you use in your drawing. Now we need to set the size or height of the text. So we'll select the size feature. We know we can just type in a number like 3 inches, but what if you don't know what the exact text height should be? There are three different ways to set the text size. We can enter an actual number for the height, or show the size or distance, by example, by drawing a line on the screen. Or you can pick an object on screen to match its height. First, I'll show you how you can set the text size by example. Type the letter D. You will be prompted to show distance by example. Now at this point, draw a line which denotes the text height. Now we can press Enter to accept the changes we made to our text. Then select the text line feature to place the text in the drawing. Enter text, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. When you drew the line for the example, did it matter at what angle the line was drawn? CAD cares only about the length of the line for the show by example method. The angle is ignored. Show by example also works for defining other settings in CAD. You can use it anytime you're prompted for a length or a height. So now I know how to set the text style and height, but I see a lot more features than that on the text settings command. What else are they for? CAD gives you control over the placement and appearance of text that you can't find in a word processor. CAD offers other settings that let you change the justification of text, as well as the text slant, its aspect, rotation, and color. I sometimes use different styles of dimensions for different customers. Mm -hmm. uh, is it easy to change how dimensions look in CAD? Oh yes, just like for text, generic CAD has many settings you can choose from to change the style of your dimensions. You can easily change the size and type of arrows, text size, the text font, how the text is used and placed in the dimension line, the length of extension lines, and so on. 
You can also choose whether you want all dimensions to be horizontal, vertical, or aligned with the particular part, and whether you are using a single, partitioned, or cumulative mode of dimensioning. To set up your dimensions, let's use the Dimension Settings command. First, we'll select the Dimension menu. Then we'll select the Dimension Settings, or type US. Let's change the arrow type to Filled. First, we'll select Arrows. Then select Type. Then select Normal, Filled. Press Enter. Now we'll change the color to 11. First, type C to select Color and type 11 or click on number 11 on the sidebar menu. Then press Enter. Now you are ready to place a horizontal dimension. First we'll select Horizontal or type LX. Then we snap near point to the first point. Then snap near point to the second point. The dimension value is shown on the command line. We'll press Enter to accept the value as it is shown, or you can append a note to it or change it. To change it, you would press the backspace key to delete the current value, then type in its new value, but we'll leave it as is. Next, CAD prompts you to enter the location of dimension. So we'll move the cursor and notice what the dimension is going to look like, then click to place it. Once you see what the dimension is going to look like, you can actually change the setting before you finish placing it. We'll select vertical dimension by typing LX and snap to the two endpoints. We'll press Enter to accept the value shown. Then we'll move the cursor to see what the dimension is going to look like. Type US for dimension settings. We'll type T for text. We'll type Z for size. Then we'll enter a new text size and press Enter. Then we'll complete the dimension just as we did before. It's great that you can change the dimension before you actually finish placing it, mm -hmm. but what if you want to change your dimension later, after you've placed it? Oh, you can change any part of the dimension with the Dimension Change command. You just tell CAD what part of the dimension you want to change and do it. Let's try it. We'll select UG. CAD prompts point to portion of dimension to change. We'll click on an arrow for one dimension. Select T for an arrow type. Then we'll select Normal Open or type O. Notice that the arrows on the dimension change to an open type. You can either pick another arrow type or press Enter to return to the settings menu. We'll press Enter again. At this time, we can press Enter to change only the dimension selected earlier or press S if you want to select another dimension to change. You can see that using dimensions is one of the more complicated features of CAD due to the number of settings available. But it's that number of settings that makes that feature so powerful and flexible. In this session, you learned how to add text and dimensions to your drawings and then how to modify them. Next time, let's wrap up our look at generic CAD by talking about how to organize your drawings by adding layers and then how to create symbols to save time. Great. Good. <laughs>
just click on a change. We'll click on layer one. None of the data on the layer is lost or removed from the drawing. It's just hidden from view. To bring that layer back, we'll click on a tame again. We'll click on layer one again. Now you can repeat this for all the layers in the drawing in order to hide or to show only the ones you want. I see how you display layers, but how do you draw on a particular layer? Well, the layer you're currently set to draw on is called the current layer. Think of it as the transparent overlay that is on top of the stack. When you first start CAD, the current layer is set to layer zero. So everything you draw is placed on layer zero. To draw objects on another layer, say layer 10, you must first change the current layer to that layer. We'll select set current or type YC and enter 10 from the keyboard or select layer 10 from the sidebar listing of layers. I will draw two lines across the drawing. From now on, any new objects you draw, like these two lines, are placed on layer 10, the new current layer. To confirm it, we could hide layer 10 and make sure the new lines we just drew disappear. However, the current layer is the only layer which cannot be hidden. So first we need to select a new current layer. To do that, we'll select set current layer or type YC and enter zero. This changes the current layer back to layer zero. Then we'll select layer hide by typing YH and enter 10. Now layer 10 is hidden, so the lines we drew on it are no longer visible. So whenever you want to draw on a different layer, you just change the current layer to that layer. That's right. Of course, if you make a mistake, you can also change objects to other layers with the change command on the edit menu. Layers are a powerful way to organize your drawings since you can perform many editing functions on individual layers, like layer change, layer erase, layer rotate, layer save, and so on. Oh, another way to organize your drawings and to save a great deal of time is to use components or symbols whenever you can. When you create a component and save it to disk, you never have to draw that object again. You can just load it from disk and place it in your drawings at any size or rotation angle. For example, take a look at this office drawing. So you've created these chairs and desks as components so you can reuse them in other drawings. Exactly. Whenever you have items that you use over and over, you can make them into components so you don't have to draw them again and again. Now, the first step to creating a component is to draw it on the screen, just as you want the symbol to appear in your drawings. For example, we can uh, draw a chair symbol using rectangles. We'll place one here and one there. I'll be sure to draw the symbol at full scale so it will be the right size when you load it into your drawings. Now we select the components menu. Then select Create by typing CC. Notice that CAD prompts you with the selection menu, just like that used for the edits command, like Move and Copy. Now we'll select Window. You want to enclose all the objects that make up your symbol in a selection box, just like you did for the Window Move command. We'll place a window around the chair symbol. Then press Enter to accept the selection. Now CAD prompts you for the component's name. Be sure to use a name that describes the symbol since you use this name to load the symbol into your drawings later. You can enter any DOS file name of eight characters. We'll type chair and press Enter. Now CAD prompts you to select a reference point for the component. Is this anything like the reference points we picked when moving and copying objects? It's very similar. The reference point is like a handle that you'll use to place the component later. It's often a good idea to snap exactly to some point on the component for its reference point. That way you can snap the component to an existing point in the drawing when you place it. So we'll snap to an end point for the reference point and press enter to finish the command. Now, can we use the new component in another drawing? We need to do one more thing. When you create a component, it's available to be used in the current drawing, but you need to save it to disk in order to use it in other drawings. So let's save our chair. We'll select Save from the Components menu, or type SA, then C. When you save a component to disk, it's best to give it the same name you used when you created it. Type Chair and press Enter. Now let's exit this drawing and load our new component into another drawing. I'll type DX and answer Y for yes when prompted if you really want to erase the drawing. 
To place a component in the drawing, we'll select the Component Place command, or type CP. Then type Chair and press Enter. You could also select Look on Disk from the bottom of the sidebar menu, and then click on the name of the component when it appears on the menu. An image of the component shows up on the screen just as we created it. It's attached to the cursor at the reference point we picked. To place it in the drawing, just move the cursor to the point where you want the component and click to place it, or snap to place the component exactly on an existing point. It's great that you can attach components wherever you need them, but what if you want to rotate a component or make it larger? Well, once you place a component in your drawing, you can use the edit commands in order to adjust it. However, you can also use nested commands in order to change the appearance of the component before it's placed. Now, this just means you can select a command like component rotate while you are already in the middle of the component place command. Here's an example of how it works. We'll select place or type CP and we'll select chair from the sidebar menu. Now, if you don't like the component size or rotation, we'll select a command to change it. Select rotation or type CR. Then we'll enter 90. We'll select scale or type CZ. We'll enter 2 for the X and Y scale factors and click to place the component. So you don't have to escape from the component place command to make the change. If you know for sure what rotation value and scale value you need before you place the component, you can set them ahead of time. Then those values stay in effect until you change them again. Otherwise, you can change the scale and rotation after you see the ghost image of a component on the screen. Now, there's much more you can do with components, so you'll want to read more about them in your user's manual. For example, you can attach information to your components like a model number or price, and then save that information in a text file or spreadsheet. Generic CAD also provides you with more than 500 commonly used components that are ready to be placed in your drawing. The most complex and precise drawings start with a single line. Start by following along with your tutorials provided in the generic CAD documentation. You just need to jump in and start drawing to really get the hang of CAD. Keep in mind that learning a CAD program is like exercising. You exercise your mind like you exercise your body. With repetitious performance of CAD commands, you'll become mentally stronger. Every time you use the program, you'll become less confused and able to absorb even more. But remember, like working out, you need mental recovery time. That's time away from the computer. Many realizations and discoveries have come during that free time, as well as helping you not burn out. Thanks a lot, Annette. You've really helped me a lot. Sure. Anytime.